good morning friends we are learning our subject that is data mining the code is 3160714 and in that good morning friends we are learning our subject that is data mining 3160714 and in that we are learning module 2 that is data pre processing let us see the previous lecture summary so what we have learned in last lecture so recall that in last lecture we have studied kevin's clustering algorithm what we did there that assume or calculate the centroids depends on what condition is given to you then find the distances of each and every data item with centroids move the data items to the proper cluster that means wherever the data is nearer to the centroid repeat calculating the centroids so no movement is there isn't it there we have used two formulas one was of euclidean distance and second one was Manhattan distance. So for Euclidean distance, what do we say? Under root of sigma q i minus p i whole square. And for Manhattan distance, what do we say? Distance between p q is absolute value of y two minus y one plus absolute value of x two minus x one. So now. we want to know smoothing by regression we have just talked of about the regression that is we can smooth the data using the regression fine so now let us see what is regression and here actually we want to learn linear regression so what it is fine so regression is used to predict the values isn't it that is known to us now we want to know in detail and we want to know that if the value for a particular data if is not available how we can guess how we can predict not actually guess how we can predict for the unknown value of x fine so let us see how to do that very interesting things are there okay this subject is really very interesting so regression is linear and non linear in general so let us consider first of all linear regression simple linear regression is a way to describe a relation between two variables through an equation of a straight line called line of best fit that most closely models this relationship right it uses the formula which one that is y is equal to a plus bx what what it is used useful for this line equation is useful to derive the line of best fit what do we mean by best fit let me show you that if our data is plotted like this we are having independent variable that is x on x axis and dependent variable y on y axis if we have plotted our data 
and data is like this okay can you say that we are having a line which is passing by all these data points no that is not possible isn't it so so what to do we will be having a line which will best fit all these points see am i saying that we will be having a line which will pass through all these points no i am not saying that i am saying that we will be having a line which will best fit all these data points right so that line equation we have to find okay so how to find that for that we are having the values for this a and this b right it is not the same that the way we were using in our school days where whatever data is given to us for x and y we put in the equation and solve the equation to find find a and b no it is not that way here okay keep that thing in your mind so how to find this a and b of this linear regression formula which is our simple line equation that is y is equal to a plus bx so for that what is a and what is b what do we say b is the slope of line right and a is the intercept isn't it that is the intercept on x axis fine okay <clears throat> so where use mean point a and equation fine slope b that is the slope describes the predicted value of y given x when using the ordinary least square methods one of the most common linear regressions slope is found by calculating as the covariance of x and y divided by the sum of squares that is variance of x and that is b is equal to n sigma xy minus sigma x into sigma y upon n sigma x square minus sigma x whole square right this is the equation to find the value of b okay that is based on whole data whatever is given to us fine right? and how we can find a that is a value which is said as y bar minus b x bar what is that y bar is what it is mean of y and x bar is what it is mean of x isn't it so both the values we have to put in this equation to find a and b b we have found with this equation fine so this is what we have to work for for finding the value of y given x now you can say that data is given so are we going to predict the value for unknown x only see the thing is here what is our aim our aim is to smooth the data wherever we find that the noise is there for that particular x we can say that value of y is either missing or you can say noisy right either noisy missing or you can say inconsistent whatever it is we can say that the that data is dirty so we want to smooth it and for that will be predicting the value using linear regression okay so let us see further 
we know that this is x independent variable and y is dependent variable which is dependent on x regression is the attempt to explain the variation in a dependent variable using the variation in the independent variables isn't it that is but obvious isn't it regression is thus an explanation of causation cause and effect right so regression is thus an explanation of causation if the independent variables sufficiently explain the variation in the dependent variable the model can be used for prediction okay let's see linear regression what do we say this we have seen right dependent variable and independent variable the data is being plotted here right that is using the points fine right? the data is being plotted here using the points now now what now we should have a line we should find the equation of a line that best fit the data you can see this line this red line right see it is not passing by all the data points but it is it is the best fit line how we can say that it is the best fit line for that we can say the distance for example this is a line and this is the data here you can see the difference that is the epsilon right this distance this distance that is for each and every data point the distance between the line and and whatever is our data point that is minimum many a times this is this difference that is the square difference is called as the residual energy we'll see that we are trying to minimize the distance with this line of data points right and that will be that will be what you can say that will be what that will be the best fit line right so here in this particular case what is the y uh, sorry b0 that will be y intercept right it will be y intercept right if the line is passing this way we can say that will be that will be what for if we are having something like this this is the line then what you can say is instead of b0 is here y intercept will be able to say it as here right that will be here fine but what do we say is b0 is y intercept okay chalo so let us go ahead the output of a regression is a function that predicts the intercept variable based upon values of the independent variables fine right? simple regression fits a straight line to the data we are trying to find a line that best fit the data right all the data we are considering now what do we see the observed y is called as y and predicted y is said as y hat okay if the observed y and predicted y both are same then it is the perfect prediction isn't it the function will make a prediction for each observed data point the observation is denoted by y 
and prediction is denoted by y hat right here what do we see that if say prediction error is there then that is epsilon right that is epsilon that here we were considering that it is the distance right distance that means whatever is observed and whatever is predicted the difference between that right so we were saying it is distance right here we can say that distance is prediction error isn't it so for each observation the variation can be described as y is equal to whatever is the predicted y uh, this is y hat y hat plus epsilon okay so we can say actual is equal to explain plus error fine now for least square method the way i used to tell you the distances right let me show you this is the dependent variable y independent variable x you can see the data points are there and this is the line which is the best fit line okay now what do we do is we find the distance of this data point and this line right so what do we do is we are putting the normal isn't it or you can say you are directly giving one intercept on this particular line okay what do we do is whatever point we are having with that we are finding the distance okay see this is the line okay we we draw the vertical line we draw the vertical line and what we get is here will be having one intercept isn't it so for that what do we do is we are finding the distance between these two points and and what that is the distance between the observed value and the predicted value right the line which will give us the predicted value fine what we do is we are trying to find the distance between these two and what actually is our aim is to reduce this particular distance fine so for that what do we do is we are minimizing <clears throat> the distance and giving the best fit line from that only we have found those formula of a and b right here we are using a least square regression it selects the line with the lowest total sum of squared prediction errors i told you that we are trying to minimize right minimize the distance so what do we do here that the lowest total sum of squared prediction errors prediction errors that are the distances right so what do we do is we are finding sum of squared prediction errors whatever distance that means what you can say is say epsilon right for each and every data point epsilon is at square of all the prediction errors and sum of that that is called the least square regression which selects what what we have found that is squared prediction errors squared whatever epsilon we found for each and every data point take the square of it and do the addition of it right so so least whatever distance we want to minimize for that we are finding the total sum of squared prediction errors and that is called as sum of squares of errors or otherwise it is said as s s e sum of squares of error right if your data shows a linear relationship between 
the x and y variables you will want to find that the line that best fits this linear relationship that line is called a regression line and has the equation that is y hat that is equal to a plus bx right this is what we have seen first right the least squares regression line is the line that makes the vertical distance from the data points to the regression line as small as possible and which is called as the least squares right because the best fit line is the one that minimizes the variance and that is what is the sum of squares of errors that is sse right this can be a bit hard to visualize but the main point is you are aiming to find the equation that fits the points as closely as possible okay so let us take the example so you can understand it very easily see example is very simple even the what you can say the uh, implementation of this regression linear regression using simple python or simple java that will also be very simple why because we just have to use the equations they are this b equation and a equation right that's what we need to find so what do we do the data is given to us that is x and y right we are having the data that is for x and y we know that what we are having is if we find the linear relation between x and y we can use the linear regression okay so for that we can say what we have to find this x multiply by y x multiply by x why are we doing that because in our equation we are having this xy sigma xy right so xy x into y is needed then x square this x square is there so that is also required fine so x into x we are calculating for the data whichever is given to us fine so you can say this is the data given to us we will find the sum as well as we will find the mean of all these things right that is of all these things means we will find the mean of x and y because we need to have x bar and y bar for finding a right we do not need to find the mean of this one right that is x into y that is not required for x square do you need to find the mean no it is not at all required isn't it so what do we require is x bar and y bar so that's what we'll do find the summation of this one find the summation of this y find the mean of it find the find the x into y and find the summation of it find the x into x and find the summation of it right so we can directly apply to the equation and we can find the values of a and b and that way we will be having the d what you can say we can be having the line equation and when we are having the line equation what is the line equation for us that is y is equal to a plus bx fine a plus bx wherein will be putting the values of you can say x and will be able to predict the value of y right okay so if the data is noisy if the data is missing if the data is inconsistent 
for any value of x what we do is we will predict the value of y with this particular equation fine right? okay so find the sum of every column right so we'll be doing sigma x is equal to 82 sigma y is equal to 73 sigma x into y that is some value sigma x square is having some value right you can calculate it uh, yourself so you can have the idea put the values in this equation that is b is equal to n sigma xy minus sigma x into sigma y upon n sigma x square minus sigma x whole square find the value of b and thereafter we will have to find the mean that is x bar and y bar and then that we will put in this equation that is a is equal to y bar minus b x bar fine we'll have to put the value of y bar b and x bar to find the value of a so while we do this whatever values we are getting for a and b what do we say is we are having the equation that is y is equal to a plus bx right so in that we'll put say x is equal to 15 what will be the value of y right so that way we'll find the value of y here is one excel sheet where you can see the values are being calculated the way you will do that for your theory assignments right in the note you will write it but for uploading also you will have at least two three excel sheets right so whenever if you want to change the data and you want to apply you can have the same excel sheet put the data and get the result right so that will make your life simple when other data is there okay so you can say we have found the total then we can say that we are finding the x bar we are finding the y bar then what we do is we are having the equation that is y is equal to what you can say a plus bx right so we are putting the value of b we are putting the value of a and and that is the equation of our regression line and in that we'll be putting x is equal to 15 so we'll be getting the result of y right it is very simple right this mathematical <coughs> example is a very simple as well as the concept is also very simple what we are doing is we are trying to have the best fit line where where the linear relationship between x and y is found and 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 we predict the value of y using the equations fine we are finding the values we are finding or you can say we are predicting the values of y where we find that the values of y are either noisy or incomplete or inconsistent right got the point so that is about linear regression okay so what is next we want to know data cleaning as a process we mm, already seen data cleaning isn't it what we do with that we are removing the noisy data right we are cleaning it how do we clean it by the smoothing for that we have seen the binning method as well as we have seen the clustering as well as we have seen just now that is linear regression so so one more method what is that let us check it out the meta data what is that what what we are doing here data cleaning is a process but what we want to learn in that that's what we are learning just now so in that now we want to learn is data discrepancy detection 
so for that what we are having and how do we find the things okay use metadata what do we mean by that as for example domain range dependency distribution that is a metadata right check field overloading check field overloading what do we mean by that let us see field overloading is error source that typically results when developers squeeze new attribute definitions into unused bit portions of already defined attributes what is the case see for example in your class the benches are there where you can say that you 60 people can sit right the capacity is that way that you 60 people can sit now what happens some space is remaining which is unused 60 students should be there but some extra space is there so what to do i'll utilize that for other students like say second year students who want to learn data mining i'll call them to sit there right so what happens that this field overloading is under the error how it happens that is typically results when developers squeeze new attribute definitions into unused bit portions got the point unused it is not already used but we are putting extra information in that right of uh, unused portions of already defined attributes and unused bit of an attribute that has a value range that uses only say 31 out of 32 bits actually the 32 bits are there but we are not using it for our data only 31 bits are used so for that one extra bit i will use for indicating something else right so that is what is called as field overloading <coughs> so data discrepancy detection is this way check uniqueness rule consecutive rule and null rule what are they <coughs> unique rule it says that each value of the given attribute must be different from all the other values for that attribute unique rule says that each value of a given attribute must be different from all other values for that attribute okay consecutive rule says that there can be no missing values between the lowest and highest values for the attribute and that all values must also be unique right so what you can say is the value cannot be beyond that between lowest and highest only the values are that that is the consecutive rule fine right? the third one is a null rule which specifies the use of blanks question marks special characters or other strings that may indicate the null condition as for example where a value for a given that attribute is not available and how such value should be handled that is you can say you are putting it as unknown or na or something like that right so for such things what we are doing that use the commercial tools 
one is data scrubbing use simple domain knowledge that is you can say postal code spell check to detect the errors and make corrections data scrubbing what is that a simple thing is to use the simple domain knowledge for example for a particular field like say postal code is that we can say that for our surat say 395 something is that right say 39500030705 something like that is available okay so whatever is possible right simple domain knowledge if it is this particular area then it should be this one something like that and you can say spell check with that we can we can detect the errors and make corrections fine second one is the data auditing by analyzing the data to discover the rules we analyze the data to discover the rules that is what rules they are following are they following the unique rule are they following the null rule are they following the consecutive rule right we have seen that here right so what we do is we are trying to find that using data auditing tools right so we'll we'll find what we do is we analyze the data to discover the rules and and relationship to detect the violator right and not only this what we are using is correlation we want to find the relation right see if unique rule is there we can say that all values must be unique right how to find the correlation say one variable is increasing and other two is increasing so that is the relation right correlation so so what do we say is we are trying to find the relationship between the between the variables right and to detect the violators if we know that the relation that is one variable is increasing and other is also increasing so so when say x is increasing y is increasing this is the relation now for some particular x if x is increasing and y is decreasing so you can see that the correlation was that that both are increasing together so if you find some some wrong things you can say that they are the violators right so for that you can say we can be using the correlation and clustering to find such outliers or violators right so you can remove that or you can take care of that fine data migration and integration so what do we do for that data migration tools allow transformations to be specified etl what is that that is extraction transformation loading tools what it does it allow users to specify transformations through a graphical user interface right integration of two processes that is iterative and you can say that interactive fine so next is what want to what we want to know is data integration so for that what do we say integration means it combines the data from multiple sources into a coherent store schema integration we know that we are having the data in database or you can say flat files or you can say any other right so what do we do is we are doing this schema integration so how do we do as for example say a a is the table where the customer id name is say a dot cast dash id and in b table it is say b dot 
cast dash hash so what we need to consider is while we integrate we need to consider both these things as similar isn't it that is a dot cast id is equal to that is similar we can say that is b dot cast dash hash right integrate matter data from different sources now what happens when we are doing the integration there can be ntd identification problem what do we mean by that for example identity sorry identify the real world entities from multiple data sources as for example somebody has returned bill clinton and somebody has returned william clinton somebody has written modi what modi narendra modi and somebody has written cm of india right so what we need to understand is both are same entity isn't it so we can say that we need to replace that by any one of it right by any one of it that cm is that and narendra modi is that will replace it maybe by narendra modi or by cm okay chief minister of india right detecting and resolving data value conflicts so for that what do we need to do for the same real world entity attribute values from different sources are different possible reasons different representations different scales as for example we can say that we are having say meters and kilometers say some people have considered the distance that is written in meters and some people have considered that in kilometers so how to how to have the same presentation how we can have that while we integrate that these things are required isn't it so what we have to do is either convert the meters into kilometers or kilometers into meters to have the same representation right you can say one more example that is where the marks for your students marks grades are there right so what say one college has done that is they have given the grades in a b c d whereas others have given as x y z w so how to understand that or you can say how to match that isn't it for that we need to see the we need to identify it and we need to find the relation whether a is matching with x or or you can say that x is matching with c d whatever it is right so you need to detect and resolve the data value conflicts right meters and kilometers are there you need to convert it into one thing if the grades are in different codes or you can say a b c d or you can say 10 8 9 something like that you have to represent it in the same way right same format like either a b c d or 10 9 8 whatever but you need to you need to have the data in the same same format or same unit right next is handling redundancy in data integration so redundant data are we having we can have we have to check and if they are there what to do with that let us take it out redundant data occur when integration of multiple databases say for example the data is there from computer department where my name is amisha free or you can say that when we are getting the data from other department or centrally people may have considered my whole name 
I'd say I'm E to Sharkan Chaksi, right? So what is the case that the same data is there? It is for the same person, okay? But 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 as we are trying to integrate the different databases, there we can find the redundant data. So what to do for that? Object identification. The same attribute or object may have different names in different databases. For example, I have say for my own name, right? Derivable data. One attribute may be a derived attribute in the other table. For example, annual revenue. So for that also you can say that the when we are integrating, when we are finding the redundant attributes, those must be detected. They must be, they must be replaced with the particular value that is that is similar to all the data, right? So what do we do is redundant attributes may be able to be detected by correlation analysis and covariance analysis. Other data will be same, right? So name is only differently returned. Otherwise, it is the data of the same person, right? So with the help of correlation analysis and covariance analysis, we'll be able to find the redundant attributes, right? Careful integration of the data from multiple sources may help reduce the, the redundancies and inconsistencies and improve mining speed and quality, fine? So next we will see correlation analysis, fine? 